Hello again. Welcome to episode seven of Storytime with Miss O'Donnell. I'm here with my sidekick, Fizzy, who's always by my side listening to stories. I hope you enjoy um, my choice for this episode. Another Tommy DePaola. Um, this one is Streganona. And as you can see from the cover, he won the Caldecott Award um, for this. A lot of people, uh, librarians in fact, thought that this was an old folktale that he had sort of resurrected from Italian folklore. But this was a totally made up character um, of Tommy DePaola's and um, there are quite a number of other Streganona stories so you might look for them in the library when we finally get back to the library. Um, it takes place in Calabria. Calabria is the place that his Italian grandparents uh, lived originally and then they immigrated to um, the United States. Um, one other thing about Strega Nona, the title, Strega in Italian means witch and Nona in Italian means grandmother. So this is basically titled Grandma Witch. Um, so Strega Nona by Tommy De Paola. In a town in Calabria, a long time ago, there lived an old lady everyone called Streganona, which meant Grandma Witch. Although all the people in town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters of the convent went because Streganona did have a magic touch. She could cure a headache with oil and water and a hairpin. She made special potions for the girls who wanted husbands. And she was very good at getting rid of warts. But Streganona was getting old and she needed someone to help her keep her little house and garden. So she put up a sign in the town square. And Big Anthony, who didn't pay attention, went to see her. Anthony, said Streganona, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her. And you must fetch the water. For this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, grazie, said Big Anthony. The one thing you must never do, said Streganona, is to touch the pasta pot. It is very valuable and I don't let anyone touch it. Oh, see, si, yes, said Big Anthony. And so the days went by. Big Anthony did his work and Streganona met with the people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed, and he had food to eat. One evening, when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Streganona singing. Peeking in the window, he saw Streganona standing over the pasta pot. She sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot, boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with steaming hot pasta. Then Streganona sang, Enough, enough, pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful, said Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. And Streganona called Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony because he didn't see Streganona blow three kisses to the magic pasta pot. Remember how I told you that their magic number three is? And this is what happened. The next day, when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, he told everyone about the pasta pot. 
and naturally everyone laughed at him because it sounded so silly. A pot that cooked all by itself. You better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said. Such a lie. And Big Anthony was angry, and that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Someday I will get that pasta pot and make it cook, and then they'll be sorry. That day came sooner than even Big Anthony would have thought. Because two days later, Stregonona said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go over the mountain to the next town to see my friend, Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden. Feed the goat and milk her. And for your lunch, there's some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Streganona, said Big Anthony. But inside, he was thinking, my chance has come. As soon as Streganona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside, pulled the pasta pot off the shelf, and put it on the floor. Now, let's see if I can remember the words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill up with pasta. Aha, said Big Anthony. And he ran to the town square, jumped on the fountain and shouted, Everyone, get forks and plates and platters and bowls. Pasta for all at Striganona's house. Big Anthony has made the magic pasta pot work. Of course, everyone laughed, but they ran home to get forks and plates and platters and bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Strigonona's, the pasta pot was so full, it was beginning to overflow. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out pasta and filled the plates and platters and bowls. There was more than enough for all the townspeople, including the priest and the sisters from the convent. And some people came back for two or three helpings, but the pot was never empty. When they had all had their fill, Big Anthony sang, Enough, enough, my pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down, my pot of clay, until I'm hungry another day. But alas, he did not blow the three kisses. He went outside, and to the applause of the crowd, Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to compliments from everyone that he didn't notice the pasta pot was still bubbling and boiling, until a sister from the convent said, Oh, Big Anthony, look! And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Streganona's house and was coming out the door. Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling. He took the pot off the floor, but the pasta kept on pouring from it. Big Anthony grabbed a cover and put it on the pot and sat on it. But the pasta raised the cover and Big Anthony as well and spilled on the floor of Streganona's house. Stop! yelled Big Anthony. But the pasta did not stop. And if someone had grabbed poor Big Anthony, if they hadn't grabbed poor Big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house. Out of the windows and through the doors came the pasta, and the pot kept right on bubbling. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses it did no good. By this time, the pasta was on its way down the road, and all the people were running to keep ahead of it. We must protect our town from the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, tables, doors, anything to make a barricade. But even that didn't work. 
The pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming. We are lost, said the people, and the priest and the sisters of the convent began praying. The pasta will cover our town, they cried. And it certainly would have had Strangonona not come down the road home from her visit. She did not have to look twice to know what had happened. She sang the magic song and blew the three kisses, and with a sputter the pot stopped boiling, and the pasta came to a halt. Oh, grazie, thank you, thank you, Stregonona, the people cried. But then they turned on poor big Anthony. String him up, the men of the town shouted. Now wait, said Stregonona. The punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from a lady standing nearby and held it out to Big Anthony. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta from my magic pasta pot, Stregonona said, and I want to sleep in my little bed tonight. So start eating. And he did, poor Big Anthony. And there's Streganona in her bed sleeping. Look at Big Anthony's belly. I hope you've enjoyed Streganona by Tommy DePaola. You are a very good audience, Fizzy. Thank you for that. See you soon.